let's talk a bit about linear transformations. Earlier in the semester, we talked about linear transformations that were defined by multiplication by a matrix of the form that t of x was equal to a times x. And we went through and we talked about those things. But now we've gone ahead and we've generalized our idea of what a vector space is. A vector space no longer has to be just Rn. So what we're talking about now is that basically a linear transformation is a function. It is a rule that assigns to each vector in one vector space. It maps it to a unique vector in the second vector space such that it preserves addition. T of u plus v is T of u plus T of v. And it preserves scalar multiplication. The transformation of a constant times the vector is that same constant times the transformation of the vector. Let's consider an example that doesn't use Euclidean Rn vectors. So let's go ahead and say v is the set of all differentiable functions on an interval from A to B. We could say differentiable everywhere, but just to make it more general, we'll say on an interval. And we'll say W is just the set of all functions. on that same interval a to b. I'll let you think about, go back to the definition of what a vector space is to verify that these things are actually vector spaces. But the whole thing I want to focus on is the linear transformation. So remember, we're all talking about functions. My vectors are now functions. So if I take the transformation of a function f of x, I'm going to define that by the derivative of f of x. Since every function in v is differentiable, certainly taking the derivative is defined for anything that's in v. And let's think about these two properties. If I try to transform, if I try to take the derivative of a sum of two functions, that's the same thing as taking the derivative of each function separately and then adding them together. So taking the derivative does preserve addition. Similarly, if I try and take the derivative of a constant times a function, that's the same thing as that constant times the derivative of the function. So taking the derivative does preserve scalar multiplication. Since this transformation preserves both addition and scalar multiplication, and again, together with the fact that these are vector spaces, that makes this a linear transformation. Now that we hopefully have some idea of how this linear transformation works, I want to think about two important sets. We call them the kernel and the range. The kernel, which is often denoted as K-E-R-T, is basically, it's the set of elements of V such that T of that vector is equal to the zero vector in W. With regards to this particular linear transformation, what this is saying, this is the set of all differentiable functions such that when I take the derivative, I get the zero function. Or in this particular case, the kernel of t is the set of all functions that are constants.
Okay, the range is the set of elements of W such that there exists an element x of v. Now let's go ahead and say this is y in w. So there exists an element x of v with t of x equal to y. Basically, when we define our t and v for the linear transformation, there's nothing that says that everything in w is the output of something in V. So for example here, since W is the set of all functions on AB, not every function is the derivative of a differentiable function. There's functions that are not continuous and things like that, such that they wouldn't be the derivative of a function. So, here we've got the set of elements that are actually hit. These are the set of functions that actually come out of the linear transformation. There isn't a good characterization in this particular example. It's just it's the set of functions that are derivatives of other functions. Just one last comment here. If I were to go back to our first idea of a linear transformation where I had t of x is equal to ax for some matrix A, the kernel of t is the same thing as the null space of that matrix A. And similarly, the range of t is the same thing as the column space of A. It's fairly easy to see that if we just think in terms of what we're doing here. The kernel of linear transformation is such things such that the transformation gives us the zero vector. Well, that's pretty much exactly what the kernel is, or the, the null space of A. The things that when we multiplied by A, we got zero. So really, in this particular case, the kernel and the null space are just different ways of saying the same thing. Now the range in the column space, there's a little bit of a disjoint, uh, an extra step in there. But remember that when I take a matrix times a vector, I'm really getting a linear combination of the columns of A. So the outputs of AX are the set of all linear combinations of columns of A which is exactly what the column space of A is.